And now I'm really honored to have uh, my next guest, a person I've known a long time, um, Samir Khalil. 40 years ago, and it's hard to believe so much time has passed, Samir, but 40 years ago, Samir helped organize. He was the founder of the Arab American Democratic Club, which was one of the first political Arab American mainstream organizations in the Midwest, in the United States. The Arab American Democratic Club did so much in terms of empowering Arab Americans and getting them to vote. Uh, in 1973, we were a small community. Today, I'm sorry, in 1983, we were a small community. Today, we are a growing, bigger community. Samir, welcome to the radio show. Thank you, Ray, for having me. Yeah, and tell us a little bit first of all about how why did why did you what moved you to want to create an Arab American Democratic Club? What was the reason? Well, um, our community was growing uh, slowly, but at that time we could not. Uh, uh, I mean, elected officials and candidates would not talk to us uh, as Arab community, as you know, we're always marginalized and they didn't care one way or another about our, our community. So therefore we could not even talk to all the, on the lowest level, you know, police will talk down to us, uh, uh, aldermen and uh, other candidates, elected officials, they could care less about us. But that uh, year, um, a new candidate came to run for mayor. Uh, his name was Harold Washington, an African-American. And I was sitting down in my office and I thought, well, this is a good opportunity for our community to get involved with a minority uh, candidate. And uh, I talked to a few people in our community, like uh, God bless his soul, Ayub Kalhami and uh, Samir Aude and Camilia Aude and uh, Khalil Shalabi and Dr. Mansoor Mansoor and Faisal Muhammad and yourself also. <clears throat> and Vivian Khalif was involved also. And uh, we started this uh, idea about Arab American Democratic Club. Uh, and we have been approached by the mayor's, uh, I mean, the, the candidate then, uh, Harold Washington office, uh, and if we can be helpful in his campaign, he was welcoming, very welcoming, and we took the opportunity uh, to help out and uh, be part of that campaign. Uh, we met a lady by the name of Lynette Lewis and uh, also Proxy Nesbitt, who asked us that time to uh, see if they can register voters from our community. <clears throat> and we knew nothing about registering voters or anything like that. Uh, so uh, uh, we sat down, Ayub and the rest of the group, and said, you know what? Uh, there is a festival going on downtown. Let's take the forms and go downtown in the festival and register voters. And we did. We came up with about 2,500 votes, registered wow. voters. And we thought it was a big deal, you know. We took this uh, list and the mayor welcomed us in a very big way. And he said, what are you going to do now? He said, we're just going to continue getting involved and get the community, uh, uh, alert the community about your campaign and getting involved. Anyway, the election took place and uh, Harold Washington won by, I think, about 40,000 votes. Right. Uh, and the tally came in and out of the 40,000 votes, there were 39,000 
Muslim and Arab surnames that voted for her at that time. Out of his total vote. Out of his total. Yeah, out of the total, yeah. But he won by 40,000. We thought the 39,000 made a difference, you know. And he noticed that. And he said, okay, what we do next? Um, how about an Arab Advisory Council? And said, great, you know. And we started working on the Arab Advisory Council. And, and just for listeners, I would remind them, back in 1983, Jane Byrne was the mayor. She'd been the first woman mayor of the city of Chicago. She was running for re-election. She's a white candidate. Richard M. Daly, who was the state's attorney, a white candidate, and the son of the longstanding Richard J. Daly, the boss, the mayor of Chicago with the Chicago machine, he was running for mayor. And Harold Washington, I think, was a former state rep. He decided he was going to run. And a lot of people at the time didn't think he had a chance. But with, I, I think it was very smart to reach out to Arab Americans uh, because you're absolutely right. He won with 36% of the vote in the city of Chicago, higher than Jane Byrne and higher than Rich Daly. And I think Arab Americans gave him the edge. He never forgot that, did he? He was very grateful to the Arab community. Absolutely. And he sent out uh, a few people from uh, his campaign, like Tim Evans, you know, talked to us that time. And uh, and it, they were really eager to see what we can do in the Arab community. And we established the idea of the Advisory Council on Arab Affairs. Uh, but no other candidate, whether uh, Jane Byrne or Daly that time or anybody, you know, considered us as an effective group. <clears throat> but uh, since he was a minority, he tried to gather as many minority groups as he could, the Latinos and uh, some others, you know, and ourselves. And really, that worked. And uh, when uh, it came down between him and the Republicans and uh, Ernie Epton, Epton, right? Yeah, uh, a lot of uh, uh, candidate, a lot of aldermen and elected officials who are white, they were uh, running the campaigns of Democrats. But since it ended up with the Democrat Harold Washington and Epton, who's white Republican, they went with Epton. Right. And the that Republican. heated up, the campaign heated up so uh, unbelievable that time. And we really did our work, our homework very well, and were able to bring in the names I just mentioned 39,000 who voted for Harold Washington, which I believe that made the difference and moved on to establish the Advisory Council on Arab Affairs. Yeah, it was a it was a significant uh, uh, block of votes that helped Harold Washington. He won the primary in the Democratic primary. He became the Democratic candidate. Now, in every election since uh, Richard J. Daley, the Democrats have always won in Chicago. But as you pointed out correctly, a lot of whites, uh, many Democrats wouldn't support a black candidate. And they ran to Bernie Epton, who was both Jewish and white and a state representative. And he had kind of a racist campaign called Vote for Bernie Before It's Too Late. But yeah. the Arab community stood by Harold Washington and the black community and Harold Washington won that election in April of 1983, making him the first black mayor of the city of Chicago, in which African-Americans were almost a third of the city population at the time. That was pretty big. He had to have been very grateful to the Arab community. And so also, <clears throat> um, with the help of Jim Zobby, the, uh, uh, Arab, the Arab American, American Institute, Institute. And from uh, between him and us talking about what do we do beside the Advisory Council on Arab Affairs as part of the city, uh, you know, working with the city of Chicago, uh, what also thought about a political organization. And from that point, we created something called the Arab American Democratic Club, 
And since then, we have hosted over probably 2,000, maybe more candidates and elected officials, local, uh, state, uh, county, and federal, even, you know, uh, presidential candidates, uh, candidates like Obama and, uh, uh, I mean, a few others, uh, I can't right. remember, but, you know, there were a few senators. And, and, that, um, and that was a time when, um, I mean, as you pointed out with Jim Zogby, the following year, 1984, Jesse Jackson started running for, you know, president and wanting to, you know, build up the momentum. Right. And again, it was Arab Americans, the Arab American Democratic Club that supported him with Jim Zogby in Washington and the Arab American Institute. And he went on in 1988 to play a prominent role as a presidential candidate, even though he didn't win. He never forgot, like Harold Washington, the role yeah. that Arab Americans played. And I think we had the largest number of delegates, didn't we? Uh, in we a did. Democratic also, convention that year, in, I believe, 88. We did in 1988. We were able, with the help of uh, Jesse Jackson and uh, Jim Zabi, the Arab American Institute, to uh, pass 13 Palestinian flanks in 13 states, okay? And that was really a big achievement for Jesse Jackson and uh, Jim Zabi and the Arab community at large and right. the Arab American Democratic Club. Uh, and from that point on, you know, now candidates weren't calling us up. They, we want to come to your event. We want your vote. We want your donations. We, we, we don't know. And uh, from that point, uh, you know, we had the blessings of, uh, God bless your soul, Maryam Zayed, who passed four years ago. Uh, and she ran for office. I ran for office. You ran for an office. Yourself. For local school, for local school, I re state rep to learn about running for office. And these were like classes, weren't they? These were an education. We were learning, right? How to run for office, how to you get were votes. Given, you were given the classes uh, at the uh, AXA school yes, for I our was. community that time. I remember that. Yes, and I we was. were learning from you how to run. That. And luckily, you know, and also, you know, we had no policemen and no uh, employees within the city. Within the Now we have uh, not a lot, but... It's grown. You know, we came a long way, but we still have to go a long way to go. Uh, but you know, the the impressive thing that we have seen a lot of Arab Americans running for offices, uh, like mayoral offices, uh, uh, Congress offices, some senators, uh, local. Uh, I mean, Illinois state senator recently. Uh, uh, Nasser Rashid uh, have won uh, as a, a state representative in Illinois, right. and Muslims also, right? Uh, Muslims and Arabs, and we really have to really study the uh, support from others toward our candidate, the Arab American and the Muslim candidate. See how the support is coming from different groups, because. The Muslims are not only Arabs. They are 50 different Muslim countries around right. the world and 22 Arab countries. Uh, and there is a difference. Some candidates are willing to talk only to Muslims, but when it comes to Arab, whether Muslim or Christian, they don't want to talk to us. Now, that was, now again, we're talking 40 years ago, even 30 years ago when we were running in the 80s and the 90s. Um, but for some reason in the 90s, the community seemed to split a little bit and we were growing in numbers, um, but it seemed like there was like some little rivalries and divisions. How was the Arab American Democratic Club able to stay so, you're probably the most popular organization in the Chicagoland area when it comes to Arab Americans, consistent, always having a breakfast brunch for the candidates. I think the last one that the AADC, the Arab American Democratic Club had, you had something like 50 candidates 
including, I think, what, four candidates for mayor of Chicago. That was unheard of only 10 or 15 years ago. That that was an amazing achievement. You know, we, our word, we keep our word, that's number one. We do not promise more than what we can deliver. And that kept the Arab American Democratic Club in the ball game for all these years. And candidates and elected officials, they were coming bigger in numbers. We sometimes have over 100 candidates, uh, judges, uh, uh, you know, you name it, uh, senators, uh, like uh, the Dick Durbin came to us so many times. Who hired uh, an Arab American as a staff yeah, member. Right, Harold right, Washington right. hired a lot of Arab Americans, didn't yes, he? Yes, yes, yes. That was I a was big his deal. liaison for the community. You know, as a, uh, you know, to go between the city and uh, Samir, the uh, do you community. Think, Samir, it really helped a lot, you know, in recognizing our community uh, here locally in, uh, in Illinois and especially Chicago and also in the southwest suburb and also nationally. Now we have uh, uh, Congresswoman Rashida Clay, uh, uh and also Ilhan Omar, who is right. from Somalia, and, uh, and other uh, candidates and other elected officials. I think, I would, I mean, I don't want to give the credit totally to the Democratic Club, but I think the Democratic Club, the Arab American Democratic Club, played a major role in bringing these people at the front, encouraged them to run for offices. Whether they win or lose, it really didn't matter as long as we run for offices. At the end, some of them have won uh, offices and, and hopefully some more on the way. And it awakened the community, didn't it, to politics? Absolutely. You know, we have a, a mayor from Egypt uh, from, in Bolingbroke. We had uh, a mayor who was born in Gaza. Uh, Gaza. Imagine someone born in Gaza became the mayor of Oak Park. His name is Anan Abu Talib. That's unheard of. Okay. So I got to get him on my radio show. Uh, well, we, of course, yeah. we got to get him on there. But you're right. Yeah, I will. I we've will seen, I we will have seen, him. we've seen a lot of Arab Americans. And I do believe it did start with the Arab American Democratic Club in Chicago. Yeah. Now, uh, our relationships with the black community, we could be stronger. But I noticed the important <laughs> thing about the Arab American Democratic Club is your commitment, your celebration of African Americans, because you have a number of speakers. I, I think you have Mary Basta, who's the only female Egyptian American mayor of Bolingbroke, who is co-hosting this in Bolingbroke at the Bolingbroke Country Club, November first. Um, and then your keynote speaker is an African American, the highest ranking African American in the state of Illinois. The Illinois right. Speaker of the House, Emmanuel Chris Welch, yes. he didn't hesitate yes. to say, because years ago, if you asked somebody to speak to any Arab group, they'd say no. Yes. Emmanuel, uh, State uh, House Speaker Emmanuel said absolutely he would come. And he's going to be introduced, I believe, by uh, another African-American at the event, Cyril Nichols, right. the state representative right. from the Bridgeview area. That's a big response. I think the Arab American Democratic Club, I think, has always been loyal to the relationship and the support that African Americans have given Arab Americans, don't you think? Yes, I mean, we only, uh, our commitment is kept. Our word is good. Uh, we will not go beyond what we can do. Uh, and, uh, and that keeps us, uh, unlike any, politics game, political games in town. You know, uh, politics, people uh, twist stories to for their advantage. We don't. We're straightforward. We are Democrats. And we tell the, the Democratic candidates or the elected officials, this is our line. This is who we are. And this is what we can deliver. And that's it. You ask us for more. We can't, you know, and um, that's that's the way. Uh, really, uh, a message to elected officials and candidates and organizations: 
stay committed and truthful with everything. You are going to be caught if you lie, you know, as we say, lies have short legs. That is a message for candidates and elected officials. He can't play both sides of the fence or that fence and that fence and say, well, you know, uh, this is politics. No, you are a political candidate, a political uh, elected official. You have to be truthful and honest to your constituents and to your people. It's, it's not about, um, you know, once you have, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, if you give access to a certain group or certain individual to an uh, elected official uh, a candidate or elected official in his office or her office, if you just open your door for certain elected official and for certain people, then you have done harm to the rest of your citizens in your ward or your, in your uh, congressional district or as a president, you know, you, you can hurt yourself by lying and not opening up for your constituents and your right. citizens. Yeah, and one of the, probably the most important lesson I think that comes out of the Arab American Democratic Club is this. Not only did we try to get Arab Americans elected, we supported many, many non-Arab Americans who won <laughs> office. At your last uh, breakfast brunch, I think a year ago, you had something like 50 candidates. Yes, there were some Arab Americans. We had several of them, but the majority were non-Arab. And we showed that we support everybody who does the right thing, right? 90% of them are non-Arab. You know, I mean, about 40 to 50 candidates, they were non-Arab. Um, and uh, we welcome him. We welcome all. Like you know, our speakers are what five, six. Uh, you know, six of them are non-Arab. Maybe right. one who's an Arab, uh, Nasser Rashid. Right. But the rest of them are all non uh, non-Arab. Yeah, I and I think that in a way, Abdul Nasser Rashid, the state representative, a great guy, by the way. I think yes. he his position is a result of the pavement that you built, the road that the Arab American Democratic Club built that not only brought Arab candidates, but brought other candidates, non-Arab candidates to support us. The black community, the African American community, though, they stood up at a time to support us, right? When it wasn't yeah. popular to support us. Remember, right. they were investigating Arab Americans in the 70s. They were making us look negative and bad back in the 70s. And yet African Americans stood up for us. And I think it's a great thing, Samir, that the Arab American Democratic Club is remembering what happened 40 years ago, what happened with Harold Washington, and having an African American as their main keynote speaker. We only got a few minutes left, Samir, but uh, the event, tell us a little bit about the dinner that is coming up. Um, I think the website is ArabDemocraticClub.com. If you go there, it'll take you to the main website. It's very right. easy to remember, ArabDemocraticClub.com. Yeah. Uh, but tell us. Call, they can call some phone numbers. Uh, I give my number, 773-719-3331. Or just go on the website that you mentioned. Uh I mean, you know, they, this is the first time we have dinner. Always we have brunch. Right. But, you know, we thought since it's the 40th anniversary, we'll change a little bit. And uh, uh, everybody is welcome. Uh, you, you have to reserve uh, ahead of time because we fill up quickly. Right. Uh, and, you know, we always have a this, full room. This and is an we event. welcome everyone, uh, you know, Latinos, uh, African Americans, uh, white, black, you know, you're all welcome. Uh, yeah, this is we'll an be event. Happy to have you. This is an event people should not miss. My guest, Samir Khalil, he's the founder of the Arab American Democratic Club, founded 40 years ago in 1983 during the campaign of the first African American to hold office as mayor of Chicago, Harold Washington. Um, and he went on to hold office for five years until his untimely death 
um, just before Thanksgiving, I believe in 1988, I think or 87. It was right after his reelection. He won election and he didn't even finish that first year of his second yeah. term. He was such a good person. Yeah, but uh, good. Samir, the AADC, what a great organization. And I appreciate you taking the time to share some of that history. Thank you so much, Ray, for inviting me. And we look forward to see you and see everybody else there. And uh, you're going to be the uh, MC. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, uh, just remind everybody, go to ArabDemocraticClub.com and buy your tickets. Get your ads. Because as Samir said, those seats are going to go fast. Samir, thank you so much, buddy. Thank you. Thank you.